Welcome to Teen YPWW, Lesson 3. I do not own the rights to this music. Today's topic is Victory for the City of Nineveh and the Prophet Jonah. Our lesson text is coming out of Jonah chapter 3 and cha Jonah chapter 4. Luke chapter 11 verses 30 to 32 and Numbers chapter 23 verses 16 through 21. Jonah chapter 3 And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. So Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days' journey. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey. And he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So the people of Nineveh believed God, and proclaimed a fast, and put on sackcloth, from the greatest of them even to the least of them. For word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, and he laid his robe from him, and covered him with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto God. Yea, let them turn every one from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands. Who can tell if God will turn and repent? and turn away from his fierce anger, that we perish not. And God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way. And God repented of the evil, that he had said that he would do unto them, and he did it not. Jonah chapter 4 But it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was very angry. And he prayed unto the Lord, and said, I pray thee, O Lord, was not this my saying? when I was yet in my country. Therefore I fled before unto Tarshish, for I knew that thou art a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and repented thee of the evil. Therefore now, O Lord, take, I beseech thee, my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. Then said the Lord, Doest thou well to be angry? So Jonah went out of the city and sat on the east side of the city, and there made him a booth, and sat under it in the shadow, till he might see what will become of the city. And the Lord God prepared a gourd, and made it to come up over Jonah, that it might be a shadow over his head, to deliver him from his grief. So Jonah was exceeding glad of the gourd, but God prepared a worm when the morning rose the next day and it smote the gourd that it withered. And it came to pass when the sun did arise, that God prepared a vehement east wind, and the sun beat upon the head of Jonah, that he fainted, and wished in himself to die, and said, It is better for me to die than to live. And God said to Jonah, Doest thou well to be angry for the gourd? And he said, I do well to be angry, even unto death. Then said the Lord, Thou hast had pity on the gourd, for the which thou hast not labored, neither madest it grow, which came up in a night, and perished in a night. And should not I spare Nineveh, that great city, wherein are more than six score thousand persons that cannot discern between their right hand and their left hand, and also much cattle? Luke chapter 11 Verses 30 to 32. For as Jonas was a sign unto the Ninevites, so shall also the Son of Man be to this generation. The Queen of the South shall rise up in the judgment with the men of this generation and condemn them. For she came from the utmost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. The man of Nineveh shall rise up in the judgment with this generation 
and shall condemn it. For they repented at the preaching of Jonas, and behold, a greater than Jonas is here. Numbers chapter 23, verses 16 through 21. And the Lord met Balaam, and put a word in his mouth, and said, Go again unto Balak, and say thus. And when he came to him, behold, he stood by his burnt offering, and the princes of Moab with him. And Balak said unto him, What hath the Lord spoken? And he took up his parable, and said, Rise up, Balak, and hear, Hearken unto me, thou son of Zippor. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Behold, I have received commandment to bless, and he hath blessed, and I can't reverse it, and I cannot reverse it. He hath not beheld iniquity in Jacob, neither hath he seen perverseness in Israel. The Lord is God. The Lord, his God, is with him, and the shout of the king is among them. The key for today's lesson, every challenge we face can be won. Today's focus, Nineveh sought the Lord with their whole hearts. The words of an old gospel song start our discussion today. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan to get thee behind. Victory is mine. I'm sure the people of the city of Nineveh sang a song like this one after God gave them the victory. They had a right to give God the praise for honoring their sacrifice and turning their hearts toward him. They faced an incredible challenge, but they won. That is the emphasis of our lesson today. God will devise, create, and ensure a victorious plan for believers today. We can have that blessed assurance today, teen listeners, that God will provide a winning plan for us as well. The saints of old would say that God can make a way in, over, through, and out for his people. Whatever kind of way that we need to be made for us, God can do it. Today we often sing the song, Waymaker, written by Star Sanak. Have you heard this song? Here are a few of the words. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. After the three days in the belly of the fish experience, Jonah was back on dry land. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. God's second request to Jonah was the same as his first request. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I give you. This time Jonah was not reluctant to complete the assignment given to him by God. Jonah was so excited to have a second chance to obey God, this time that he put aside his personal prejudices against the Assyrians of Nineveh and made the journey there in record time. The journey to Nineveh from Jonah's house usually took three days. However, Jonah made the journey in one day. He prophesied to them that in 40 days, the city of Nineveh would be overthrown and destroyed by God if they continued living in their sinful manner. When the people of Nineveh heard the words of Jonah, they believed him and repented of their sins. The king of Nineveh made a decree for all the citizens of Nineveh and their animals to fast and pray unto God for forgiveness for their sins. They were also instructed to stop doing all the evil things and violent acts they had been doing. The king had a revelation and a glimpse of God's mercy. He told the people, who knows? God may yet relent and with compassion turn from his fierce anger so that we will not perish. When God saw the sincerity of their hearts and the dutifulness of their actions, he changed his mind. God decided not to destroy Nineveh as he had previously said he would. Therefore, the city of Nineveh won the victory over their challenge that day. 
Finally, the time comes to an end. Finally, the time comes to end the 40-day standoff of God's promise to destroy Nineveh. Jonah went to a high place in the city to see this event. God provided Jonah a leafy plant to give him shade and comfort while he waited. God accepted the sacrifice and prayers of the people of Nineveh and did not destroy them. When Jonah saw this, he became very angry. He bragged on the goodness of God for saving the lives of the Ninevites, but then requested that God take his life. Jonah just couldn't stand to see his enemy saved. God questioned his prejudiced motives again. Then in a wonderful parallel example of a leafy plant, God shows Jonah that his anger towards the Ninevites was unmerited and unfair. How could Jonah be so happy about the leafy plant, but so angry about the children and livestock of Nineveh being allowed to live? Once again, Jonah was reminded that God's plan of salvation extends to all people of the earth. In Luke chapter 11, verses 30 to 32, Jesus acknowledges the work of Jonah in the city of Nineveh. This acknowledgement was a victory for Jonah. Jesus compared himself to Jonah specifically the length of time that they each spent in a deathly position. Jonah spent three days in the belly of the fish. Jesus spent three days in the tomb. Furthermore, Jesus recognizes the faith of the men at, Ni at Nineveh who believed Jonah and repented because of Jonah's message. The questions for today. You can write down your answers and search the scriptures on your own. Question one, God cares for the righteous and the unrighteous. How is this fact demonstrated in the lesson? Question two, the king of Nineveh demonstrates an amazing level of sincerity. List the things that this king did after he heard the prophetic message from Jonah. Question three, we must be careful about systemic racism as believers. Discuss this. Question four, God has promised his people victory in their lives and ministry assignments. Discuss this. The end. God bless you and thank you for joining me today.